What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage and my 72 914 project. This will be our last video before we get this thing started. All right, I've been doing a little bit of off camera work and I promised no more wiring videos. So uh, we got last week's video on the TPS and now we're gonna go and check out some of the odds and ends and the buttoning up things that uh, I've had to do to get this thing up and ready to go. So I think everything is hooked up and connected correctly, but we're gonna find out when we put power to it and hook the computer up. So there's really only one major component you guys haven't seen. So let's take a look at the car and see what we've done and see if we're ready to roll. So I put in a couple of nights of off-camera work just trying to get some things done and get us ready for our first start. Uh, the car has not moved since probably January. And uh, we have, as of today's filming, exactly four weeks until the Amelia Island Concours, uh, the Porsche Work Reunion, Cars and Coffee, Concord Lemons, all the stuff that's happening that weekend. And the goal is to have this car available to drive there and use for the weekend and show it off and do that kind of things. I've paid and registered for works uh, and we're gonna see if we're gonna make it. So uh, by the time you see this video, it'll probably only be two weeks to go. So fingers crossed. Now let's get into what we've done here. So the engine compartment looks considerably more finished. I uh, have reconnected my fuel pressure gauge, the little manual deal. I might put a cinder in that eventually to get that thing going. So um, I have my stock harnesses back in place and you can see over here in the corner, I have built myself a little bit of a relay setup. So I have two relays and two fuses uh, that controls between the two of them, the ECU, the ignition circuit uh, for the uh, coil and the power for the injector. So I did pull a battery cable over from my battery. I was tired of all the connections up top so I did go ahead and put in a distribution block. You can see that down below. So that has uh, a power wire coming from the battery. And then we've got a wire coming out for the stock power, which I was able to recrimp. And then I've got a red wire coming across through the main harness to power these two relays. Other thing I've done and found out that I need to do is way down here is the TAC adapter. Let's see if I can get that any closer for you guys that I got from Caltech. So I'm using one of the digital pulse outputs, that little black box and connector there, uh, to make sure that I can feed a tack signal right back in here to my stock connection to go to the stock tachometer up there in the car. So the other big component that you guys have not seen that I've not talked about is right here. This is a drift motion remote idle air control valve. So I'm using uh, the Haltech to control bypass air. So rather than grabbing it from the air box and taking it underneath the air blade and the metered air, it has its own little filter. It's a sweet little remote deal. You can literally put this wherever. I left this pretty loose so I can move that if I needed to. I thought about putting it up here, but um, I really kind of wanted to keep it all down on the air box. So I decided to run a filter on this and then I have hooked up these, the vent lines to the cylinder heads. Now, let's come across to the other side and we can see a couple more things that have happened. I did make a set of plug wires. These are a universal kit. It's a MSD Street Fire 8.5 millimeter air-cooled kit from the dub shop. Uh, this is for my fog lights and air horn. We will hook that back up once the car is running. No need to air horn ourselves while we're trying to get this fixed. So, injectors are in. I use these little cheap clip labels you can get them on amazon for like literally six bucks um, so i put them on the plug wires and i put them on the injector wires because there's nowhere else to label that so everything is plugged in i got my crank trigger plugged in i have plugs on everything that needs to be plugged tps air intake all of this stuff is in so it's a lot more vacuum and connections than i thought it might be it's a little busier than i was hoping for it's obviously busier than an independent throttle body setup but it is working so i've labeled my connections on my coil Confirm this with the dub shop and I'm looking at the ignition outputs on the Haltech to make sure that this is what I think it will do. I believe I can program these for whatever I want, but this is ignition one for one and three and ignition two for two and four for the firing order for my 1432 pancake type four. So that's really what's been going on in the engine compartment. A lot of work trying to get this up to speed and ready to roll. Um, the next step here is to get the computer plugged in and to make sure that 
everything is connected appropriately. I know what's connected to what and it's ready to fire up for the first time. The only other connection that I've made is down inside the car. I went ahead and pulled out the yellow wire from my Innovate Wideband and made sure that that is connected all the way back through up here into one of the uh, voltage inputs for the Haltech. So I'm gonna be able to feed from my oxygen sensor, which is way back here, right there, all the way up into the computer. You can see I've not connected my oil temp sensor down there. I'll probably get that car jacked up and plugged in before I do anything else. Um, at this moment, the CVs are still out of the car. I do have the parts for the swing arm bushings, but that stuff's gonna have to come in a later video. So from here out, we're gonna go ahead and get the computer hooked up, make sure everything is connected, and then we're gonna see about trying to get it started. All right, so this is the problem that we've identified here. This is our coil from the dub shop, and it does not have an igniter or an exciter or whatever you want to call it built in. They offer one that does have that, and I think that is actually the one that we need because the signal coming out of the ECU is a one amp max ground, and I talked to Haltech, and I've, I've tried to probe this with a Noid light, and I can't really tell if it's putting out the right signal or not, but I know it won't fire this coil because it's just not enough. So we're going to actually pull this coil out, take it away and put in one that has the exciter or the igniter built in. So that is on the way. Shout out to the Haltech guys and to uh, Mario at the dub shop for the tech support on that. I would have never known I needed that. So uh, it is on the way and we'll take a look at that as soon as it arrives.